Today on the Texas Tribune Weekend Insider, how does a poor U.S. economy lead to lower illegal immigration numbers? Julian Aguilar explains. Executive Editor Ross Ramsey talks about candidates defeated in 2010 who are now looking to voters for a second chance in 2012. The uh, Pew Hispanic Center released a report just recently saying that um, there are now 10.2 million undocumented or illegal immigrants in the United States, and that's the lowest it's been in the last three years. Um, about 2008, it hit 12 million, which is what you still hear on the campaign trail. Uh, there's 10.2 million adults, and there are about a million children. So what this means is that even though immigration and spillover violence on the border is a huge, huge issue on the campaign trail, it seems to kind of be in the, in the minds of the policy wonks and the general public, it seems to be less an issue than the economy, which actually goes hand in hand with immigration, illegal immigration, when the economy is good more people come over. Record levels of border patrol on the, uh, on the border, which combines with the fact that there's a sour economy and that the violence in Mexico, at least in the border town, seems to be dipping. It's not by any means gone away, but these three factors have contributed to lower illegal immigration numbers this past fiscal year than in the past three or four years. Every time you come to candidate filing, you get a bunch of people who are dropping out or retiring or whatever. But there's also this other class of people who got beat last time and who have filed to run again. So, you know, maybe you didn't mean it when you fired me two years ago, or maybe it was a quirk and maybe I ought to try again. So we have a fairly substantial list of candidates who were defeated either in the primaries or the general elections in 2010 who are running for another shot at this here in 2012. There's a couple of things at play here. One of them is just, you know, I can't believe the voters turned me away and I'm going to give them another chance to say what a great candidate I am and they want me back in office. Maybe they're thinking now that they've gotten a look at the alternative, they want me, they'll want me back. But there are some other structural things here too. Um, it's a redistricting year, so we have new maps. So it may be that you were in a district, that a candidate was in a district that was not particularly well suited to them. You know, a, a Republican who was winning in Democratic territory or a Democrat who was winning in Republican territory. And for one reason or another, the new maps look good to them. And they think, well, you know, I can get it back. It's a different electorate. The other one is because it's a redistricting year and because we've had a couple of tough sessions, a lot of members have said, I'm not going to run for re-election. And so people are kind of scooting around and saying, well, I can run in one of those it's more than two dozen seats now that are open. So a lot of people who maybe we're in office before looking at that and saying, well, there's an opportunity, what the heck? You know, um, people in politics are competitive, and if they get beat, a lot of them get back up, dust themselves off, and go try again.